All right. Uh, <laughs> let's bring in Brian Baldinger, who I, I probably think doesn't have a strong opinion on that topic, but may have some strong opinions on some other things. Baldy, how are you, first of all? Hey, go ahead. what do you say, guys, Bo, uh, Zach? That's, uh, I'm doing great. I mean, I just uh, studied uh, Monday Night Football game and did a bunch of shows around it. And so uh, I'm just uh, kind of looking ahead to week eight already, I think. I think I got everything digested from last week. It does. It does go fast, the season, obviously. And we thank you for joining us, as always. Let's let's start with Kevin Byard and the acquisition of him from uh, from Howie Roseman. He makes another deal. What can you tell us your thoughts on Kevin Byer? Does he and having watched him this season, is he still playing at the sort of the same level that he had been playing for the past few years? Yeah, Bo, honestly, I've known Kevin Byer since he was at Middle, Middle Tennessee State. I have known a kid a long, long time. He's a Philadelphia guy. But I, I, I did some Middle Tennessee State games, the Blue Raiders, um, Murfreesboro, Tennessee. Like I, I just, you know, the guy had 18 interceptions in, in college in four years. And I think he was a third-round pick, uh, if I'm not mistaken. But, you know, he's got 27 career interceptions. But it's, it, it's, it's way more than that. Since he took over starting in 2017, he's never missed a start. It's, it's every week, it's every game, it's every play. I mean, he's almost every snap for the last eight years now. And, you know, you always know him. He's always got the, the red sleeve on and the gloves, like in Tennessee. We'll see what he wears here in Philly. But he's just been the marquee player. Like, they've had a good front. Jeffrey Simmons is a great player. But, like, he's been their marquee player um, on a number one ranked defense two years ago. Um, he's he's a phenomenal, phenomenal center fielder. Like, he's a reliable tackler. He's smart as hell. He's a great teammate. He, when you guys get to know him, like, he loves to talk the game. Like, he's he's just a – I mean, how he could have – I know he's making phone calls to a lot of teams for different safeties and see who he could shake loose. The fact that Tennessee would let Kevin Byard go just has me scratching my head. There's things you could say, okay, contract is too heavy, all this, you know, declining player. This guy is – he'll. He'll. in fact, they played Philadelphia last year, remember? Like it was around – remember, like the Eagles threw for like 380 yards against them? It was horrible. But I remember talking to him on the field before the game, and he, I don't think he had an interception at that point, like week five last year, something like that. And then he, then he ended up getting – like four or five interceptions the rest of the year. Like he, you can't force it. He knows that. So he's not going to go hunting for interceptions. Like when they're, when he's in the right place and he covers a lot of ground, like he'll come up with big plays. Baldy, I'm, I'm curious your perspective, both as a former player and someone who's around these guys all the time in that we, we hear that it can be hard to make a team change mid season to learn a system, to acclimate, What's your sense of how that transition goes? Is that overstated, or is, it, is that something to be mindful of here? Well, you're talking about the addition of Bayern yeah, yeah. and how going he's going to fit in? Going from one team to another, midseason, learning a new system, trying to adjust to new teammates, trying to adjust to a, a new situation. Well, I, I think this is a good situation for Kevin. I mean, the team in Tennessee right now, it's declining. I, I, I think that either Malik Willis or – Will Levis is going to take over. I mean, it's a changing of the guard right now. And so I think it started really with the release of A.J. Brown or the trade of A.J. Brown, I should say, last year. And they just haven't been able to put it together. But I think Kevin Byard, like, first of all, you, you know, I think everybody would love to come home. Like, you know, you've seen what it's done to DeAndre Swift. Not, I think a lot of people would like to go home and finish your career. He's got a chance here. And he's going to a Super Bowl contending team. And – while they've been a playoff team and they were the number one seed in the AFC two years ago, I mean, this is a golden opportunity for him. I think he'll he'll walk into that room with Slay and Bradbury and, you know, some of the veterans. And, like, I don't know. I, I just don't think it's going to take long for him to adjust or for the team to adjust to him. I think free safeties, like, there's only certain coverages, you know, that you have to know. And, you know, there, there might be different landmarks. But I think the communication will be real strong. I just think Kevin Byard walking in that locker room right now, Zach, like everybody knows, like maybe he's seen Julio last week. Maybe it didn't for him or not. I don't know. They, but I think when he walks in that locker room, everybody knows who he is. You know, you're a two-time all-pro player. You walk in that locker room. Like they know what this is all about. It's loading up for January and February. And it's just a reminder of what's expected of this team right now. It is also another week uh, in which the – 
state of the secondary changes, right? We have seen a different secondary every game this season for the Eagles. And I think for us, the story of the game on Sunday was, was what a job Sean Desai did in, in sort of flummoxing that, that Dolphins offense. After watching the film, what, what impressed you the most about the plan that he put together? Well, even on the, the touchdown throw to Tyreek Hill with, you know, you know, I mean, they had bracket coverage on him. I mean, they were in the right place. They just didn't squeeze it hard enough, you know. I mean, Edmonds was back there. Maybe that's why Edmonds is gone. But, you know, so Bradbury, I mean, they've got the right defense to bracket him. And two is looking right at him. And if they played it a little tighter, they'd probably keep Tyreek out of the end zone. But, you know, the interception by Slay was just classic. Like, I think Waddle ran the wrong route, to be honest with you. I think he should have taken it to the post, and that would have taken Slay out. Um, and maybe they got the wheel to Mostert behind it. But that was, you know, that's the, I think, 28th interception for Slay now. Like, that's just a remarkable play. I, I, I hit him up on social media about it. You know, like, not everybody has the, the ability to, to go to that spot in a, in a, in a, in a place where it's going to be 24-24. Like, Mostert's going to catch that ball in the corner right where he's supposed to be unless Slay makes that play. So uh, I just thought it was really tight against, uh, you know, a team that can air it out with the best of them. And, it, you know, it starts up front. Jalen Carter knocks out the left guard in the fourth play of the game. Um, they got to go to the third left guard of the season. They got a lot weaker up front. Um, they they dominated the game up front. And when they fell behind and Tua had to kind of drop back and throw, you know, it was, it was – uh, you know, they just kind of sat back and waited on it. They didn't get anything over their head. At this time last week, we spent a good chunk of this conversation talking about Lane Johnson. As as you predicted, he was out there, no injury designation. How do you think he played, and can you settle it for all the viewers? Is his sack streak still alive? Is that one on him, or was that on Sua? Well, so, Zach, on the play, it's a jet protection, a slide protection. So they've got a blitz coming. All right, David Long is coming off the slot, and Lane sees it, you know. And really, it's Kelsey, it's Apeta, and it's Lane responsible for, you know, Wilkins and Phillips and, and David Long. And so Lane steps out wide, and really, I'm, I mean, it's on Sue, and I'm not here to criticize him or anything. He's still a young player. But it's classic slide protection. It, they should just build the picket fence. And so what happened to Lane was when he saw Phillips, like, you feel it. You don't really see it. You feel it. Like, he's coming inside, and nobody's there. And so Lane immediately kind of, like, tried to cover for it because that's the most direct line to the quarterback there to try to slow him down and then get a piece along. And, you know, the, the protection should have handled the pressure, and that, that that should not be on Lane Johnson. If you want to give Lane Johnson, you know, let him surrender a sack, let somebody beat him. You know, let him beat him. Let somebody out there in this business – beat them for a sack, but that that's protection, uh, jet protection. And that's not on lane. And how do you think he, he came out of that game? Just generally? I thought he played really well. I, in fact, I texted him. I thought he is like, he's blocking a lot better in the run game. I think I thought he had a, a real good game overall. And then in the run game, even though they didn't run the ball great in the game, I thought his run blocking was really good. I know he's worked real hard on his lower body strength and you can see it. He's, like he's, you know, he's finishing runs. A lot of times he pulls off. He does, and I don't blame these tackles in this league. Like, you, you know, these re referees see somebody go to the ground, they want to throw the flag, so he pulls off sometimes. But I, I think he's getting good movement at the point. And I, like Jalen Phillips is a handful. Like he's a good football player. He's doesn't have the sack numbers right now that I, I think he will have at the end of the season. But that guy is is a handful because he's got great movement. But I thought Lane played really well, and you couldn't tell that, uh, you know, he had a grade one ankle sprain or high ankle sprain, whatever they called it. But I thought he, he played through it real well. Here's my my sort of general question for you, Baldy. You know, we're so uh, insulated on, on the Eagles here, and we've been debating, you know, how well they're playing over the first eight games of the season, six, seven games of the season. And we sit here now, we pull our heads up, and they're one of two teams who are six and one in the league. Um, I'm curious what you think, having having paid more attention to what's going on around the league, do you feel like the Eagles are right now one of the two best teams in football? Yeah, because I think they're just, you know, I mean, it's just classic, you know, Howie. But, I mean, they're just so strong in the trenches right now, you know. I mean, their depth and how they rotate these defensive linemen right now. You've seen Sweat and Reddick just 
you know, looking like they did last year. The addition of Jalen Carter, you just can't talk about it enough. Forget about the, the sacks or tackles. I mean, that guy makes a difference. But they, I mean, they're, they're really deep up front. Um, and then on the offensive line, look, you lose Lane Johnson in the game, you lose your right guard, um, you know, next guy step up. Like, I think they just have – I think they're just tremendous on both sides of the ball right there. That was the difference against the Dolphins. Physically, they beat them up pretty good. Um, and so they just – you know, they just keep – you know, they're, they're waving linebackers through. You saw Nicobe Dean played pretty fast in there the other day. He's been out, but, he, you know, he made an impact. And then I don't know what Julio's going to do, guys. I really don't. I know he had the one catch the other day, but, um, you know, nobody has an answer for A.J. Brown in this business right now. And I thought the quarterback played outside of, you know, the, um, you know, the fumble. And, you know, I mean, I, I thought he played pretty good. If I can follow up on, on that, A.J. Brown's on this historic stretch right now, five consecutive games with 125-plus yep. yards. What does the film show that, that is, is, is kind of differentiating him other than just the outstanding size, the ability to make those, 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 those yards after the catch? Well, it's a couple things, uh, Zach. I mean, he has great timing on the deep ball. Like, just the adjustment to the ball in the air. It's Not everybody tracks a ball. You know, some guys who are great baseball players, and they know how to track a ball. We'll watch the Phillies tonight. Cheer them on. We'll watch them in the outfield. But he tracks a deep ball really, really well. He uses his body really well. And he goes, like, these routes over the middle of the field, like, his ability to stop, start, and get going in the other direction away from the defender is just elite. And, and I know he's worked hard on his speed, Zach, and his explosion. Like that was his emphasis this off season. And it shows up. It really does show up. I mean, in some, some fields you can see the rubber kicking up. You can see the dirt on a grass field, maybe in Washington this weekend, you'll see it, but you can just see like he's, he's digging in and you know, he just, he can run every route. But his ability to track the deep ball is just as good as it gets. Well, Baldy, we uh, we appreciate you stopping by once again and, and dropping some knowledge for us. Thank you very much. We'll talk to you next week. Okay, guys. You bet, man. Enjoy it this weekend. Take care. All right.